we're back. Game number two of our lone best of three of the day. Navi getting towards the tail end of their schedule while Fnatic picks up, uh, up steam, heading through the heart of their own, both with their eyes on D2L Western Challenge postseason play. Game one with the way of Fnatic and went their way pretty impressively, if we're honest. And we could see Navi not about to let it happen twice in a row as they ban the IO out immediately. Also take away Hani's invoker while uh, Fnatic. Well, I, I got to say, they kind of got away from the chalk a little bit. They picked themselves up a lichen, but they have to give away an ember spirit to do it. They also ban out the bat. They help break down the draft and, of course, then the insight and analysis. Welcome in once again, Trouf. And, uh, yeah, I think we're we're, we're going to hope that we found a secondary solution. And um, those who were listening in game one, I'm sure, could tell that there were. Um, uh, I, I didn't know you were having issues, but I could tell there's a bit of a disconnect because I would say things that you would just kind of move on to something else. And it wasn't, <laughs> but I knew I knew it wasn't like you being a jerk. I knew it was probably something technical. But we got a new sound uh, sound situation. Hopefully we're coming through loud and clear, not just to each other, but certainly to everyone here on the stream. Yep, hope I sound good to you and sound everyone out beautiful, there. Beautiful. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, uh, it, it was just, man, I think it's just the connection to Skype. But anyway, aside from that point, Wisp here, um, banned out. I totally thought this was going to happen. As Fnatic seems to be, honestly, I, I would say one of the, okay, I would say the best team that uses Wisp and utilizes Agreed. them. Alliance uses them quite well as well with um, EGM playing it, but I think No Tail just understands the hero. He does a lot of quirky, cheeky little plays that actually do add up and make a difference throughout the rest of the game. Not to mention, um, it's not just the Wisp too, but I think Tiny, honestly, in his own right, maybe doesn't warrant a ban, but at least needs a, a close eye to be looked at. Um, you know, Tony, he's been <laughs> so popular for Fnatic and Aerith in particular, uh, but they have a new hero in their arsenal that's just as strong, and if not stronger, and that's the Lycan here picked up here for Fnatic early on. Trium Protector um, is also picked up for Na'Vi, and in his own right, Puppy's been playing him so well mm -hmm. with Living Armor, just all across the board on Heroes at Clutch Times, and also on the on the towers at all times in the game to make, make it just so annoying for the other team to push down the tower. Yep, completely agree. And you know, it looks like, by the way, talking about pushing down towers, it looks like that's going to be the course of action for Fnatic. They pick up the Lycan and the Dazzle, two phenomenal early heroes if you want to try to just go with a push strategy. And we've talked about it, and we've seen it uh, play itself out. You, if you're going to give away an Ember Spirit, that's fine. You just can't let that, that hero reach the late game. And if you can land yourself a Lycan, which is considered uh, amongst Fnatic's most pros so that I know, to be right on par with Ember in terms of how powerful he is and in terms of how much damage you can do um, just across the whole span of the game. If you're able to get that, you're in a great position. And it wouldn't shock me at all to see Fnatic go ahead and just go full out 100%, no doubt about it, push the hell out of him, even against the tree and against an Ember who can spam the waves out a little bit. But we, we've seen it again throughout D2L play. If you give away the Ember and you just push down his throat, he can't fight. He yeah. needs more items. He needs time. And if you can take that away from him, he never has a chance to develop. Yeah, good point. Also, I, I feel like I've watched Dendi a couple times lately on Ember Spirit. I don't know if he gets Battle Fury. Mm -hmm. Maybe he just distinguishes it um, from game to game as far as if he needs to get the cleave or not. Uh, I think most people regard it as kind of the quote-unquote standard build for Ember Spirit. The mm -hmm. other build that what I see Dendi do a lot is um, early phase drums into Desolator. Again, it's probably just based off of what he needs best that game. But... Um, if there is heavy push involved, and there are going to be lots of creeps with Lycan's Wolves and possible Necro 3 coming out from him, um, then I think Battle Fury would be the appropriate build here. But as you mentioned, just being able to, you know, hard push down towers as fast as you can, create lots of pressure. And the, the big thing about that is it gives your supports lots of farm, too. Mm -hmm. And if you have support, and supports, I think, are the biggest thing as far as shutting down Ember, because those are the heroes that have good spells like Ember. But speaking of which, actually, Rubik is banned out here for Na'Vi. I was just going to loot a Rubik picked up. There's also other good options. Rasta is very good. Also synergizes well with pushing strats with Lycan. Mm -hmm. So Rasta might be a good choice here for Fnatic. Could even get banned out here from Navi. I would not be surprised. Yeah, I agree 100%. Let's think of the, the heroes that jump to mind immediately that I that you just know Fnatic runs fairly well. And, of course, they'd have to figure out their lanes. And Navi's actually more worried about an engagement. They are going to grab an Enigma, though. An Enigma, I think, is a great pickup for a number of reasons. We'll touch on that in a minute. But the heroes that stand out right now are the Pugna. Um, as uh, as well as um, the the Rasta, as you had said, Doom actually works fairly okay in an uh, early team fight lineup, especially if you go with that mechanism kind of an approach to him, get the early mech and then just go mass Auras. Uh, the Vlads will obviously most likely be built by Lycan, but after that, you can just go something like a mech straight up to an Assault Curass and take that pressure off of Lycan, let him get a BKB a little bit earlier, something like that. 
Um, but yeah, a lot of options out for Five Fnatic. Seconds. But Bring the up. Enigma is a great pick. You can you can uh, more importantly than just counter push, you can actually just push Five. with him. Um, and split push with him with the power of Eidolons. He does give you, obviously, the nice big black hole. Um, and before Lycan gets up any magic immunity, Malefice actually does screw with him quite a bit, even when he's in his wolf form, because he tries to chase targets down. And uh, he does have a bit of a wind-up on, on his auto attack, and it, it really will disjoint that quite a bit. So I feel like this is a solid draft out of Na'Vi. It's just a matter of how Fnatic's going to react to it now. He does actually have a kind of a wonky wind-up attack. I've noticed that as well. It's a good point. And oh yes, I love Lion. I was oh, yeah. I've always mentioned right when Ember Spirit started getting popular, I was like, Lion's such a good hero against him because if you not only can you just blink hex him immediately, which is already good in its own right, but other heroes have that too, like Rubik the blink lift if he does get a blink or just even just lift in general. But Lion, if you can get off um your ult before he casts the uh flame guard, it's just a massive amount of damage as far as bursting Ember Spirit down. So I really like the Lion pickup. Mm -hmm coming from Fnatic. It's one of my favorite support heroes on top of Disruptor is up there for me. But uh, Enigma, building on that point, um, also just the black hole in general is very, very good against the Lycan because obviously um, it makes his ult kind of useless if you're able to burst him down throughout it. Not to mention it goes through BKB. So um, Enigma's actually a pretty good tool against Lycan as well. And you mentioned just the pushing power of Enigma. It's one of the highest pushing heroes in the game. People just forget about how much damage those Eidolons can do. And that Timbersaw picked up here for Navi. I love that pickup of the Timbersaw. It gives them more counter push. Pushing into a, a Timber who beats you to the tower and can just throw the Chakram out. You have to come through it. Even even if you have blink heroes, no one's going to have a team that everyone has a blink on. You still have to come through the Chakram with at least a couple of heroes. Makes it very tough to take those fights. He's excellent in terms of early and mid game. Um... Uh, potential, his combat potential just through the roof. He's very escapable, tough to track down, but Fnatic going right back to the tiny pick, Sans Io this time. Now, the way that they're going to lane this is of particular interest now. Um, Lycan, I mean, you can jungle a Lycan. It's just not very efficient. I mean, there was a time whenever he was through the roof in his efficiency in the jungle, but that's just not how you want to, to handle him. Generally speaking, you see a Lycan, you want to try to get him some solo uh, solo lane farm, if possible, in a solo safe lane, but even that's a little complicated. And oftentimes, you, it requires a tri lane. But now you have a tiny who could end up going mid. We'll see if that's going to I Honestly, I'm not sure. Like, what do you think? Like, looking at Fnatic's line, how do you think the lanes are going to work out? I think it's... I think it's probably most likely just Lycan mid against mm -hmm. Ember Spirit. It can do quite well, especially if you get up a Quelling Blade and you just have immense auto attack damage. Mm -hmm. So I would say the most likely is Lycan mid and then either a tri lane in the safe lane or just one of those heroes rotating back between mid and bot, um, sorry, mid and top to help out uh, both to, uh, the tiny and the Lycan, probably Dazzle roaming between. Yep. That, that would be my guess. Now they can run it. The thing I love about Lycan is actually he can farm very fast in the jungle. All you have to do is get the stout, uh, stout quelling and he actually farms really fast. All you have to do is just tank all the creeps to make sure your wolves don't die because your wolves actually still do a ton of damage in the beginning. They're just really, really weak. Like they take a lot of damage themselves too. Mm -hmm. um, they they probably won't do that. Like it's probably very, very far out the window. Right. Just as a possibility. And then Centaur here picked up for yep. Fnatic. I would... get, we'll see if Hani is going to be playing. Yeah, it's probably going to be like in. Yep. I actually, I love like and mid. It's funny uh, with my little stack of friends, we've been, uh, you know, we always try out, you know, things like that. We uh, tried like in mid last night um, playing in team matchmaking, and it worked ridiculously well. But just so long as you have a little bit of help and you have rotations uh, from supports if you're anticipating gank or something like that, he's actually very, very tough to deal with in terms of harassment from the wolves because he gains levels so quickly. And as the wolves level up, it becomes hard for most mids, most popular mids, especially pre-level six, to really stand up to the, the kind of harassment you can put on. And then if you also get help in terms of just putting pressure on the mid uh, from a, a support rotation, it can quickly snowball out of control. I also love the Centaur War Runner pickup now. Uh, for Fnatic, he was the one that seemed to make the most sense um, as you were breaking down uh, the way you thought the lanes were going to go. Centaur obviously would make uh, seem to be the right pickup to go out into the off lane. Stampede makes both the Lycan and the Tiny so much more effective in terms of getting in and out of fights. It um, makes it so Tiny doesn't have to get a blink. And, you know, blink anymore. Blink Tiny just isn't seen nearly as much as it used to be. And now the, the weakness that comes with skipping that kind of mobility item is completely negated as well. And you just have another way to get into these fights. Not to mention Tiny's ability to toss the Centaur. Tossing a centaur into a group of enemies sets up a perfect stomp. If your, t your timing is right on it, then you can stampede the rest of your team on top of them while everyone's disabled. It's a very lethal combination. 
And uh, seeing it in pro play always just makes me kind of giddy because if it's done right, it can be disgusting. Yeah, I, I wonder if they're going to do some kind of aggressive lane here because Era has interesting items. He's got more stats, so he wants to combo earlier. Now he can probably combo at level two if he wants to. It's so funny seeing these level one engagements because I just see pings happening all the time. Like ping, 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 ping. We might see how, oh, this this is engagement. Look at this. <laughs> there we go. Hex on the Kuro. Trixie moving in. Take stomp. We'll go ahead and follow it up. There was the avalanche as well. Funix right on No-Tail, though. No-Tail eating a lot of damage behind that. First blood going to end up going to Fnatic. They might lose Trixie in the process, though. However, they're going to get at least one more. Searing chains for Dindy. Buy some time. Puppy auto attacks enough to finally get them on the board, but he may end up dead because of it, too. Era has avalanche. Will spin. It's going to be three for one. And Havos can do nothing but fall back. And Fnatic taking a big level one engagement. I'm a little baffled as to why Na'Vi thought it was a good idea to hang around there. The level one combat potential on Fnatic just so much higher. It is. It's way higher. Enigma's kind of useless in level one. Yep. And like you can maybe make a, a statement for like leveling the Malefist, but that screws mm -hmm. completely your jungle capabilities. Not to mention, actually, it looks like he's going to go top, so scratch that, but... It just really screws you early on farming. Oh, Dandy, that's a level one hex. It's duration 2.5 seconds. But Good. he should be fine. There's a haste on Hani, but Dandy will be fine for the moment. Yep, able to get him back. And yeah, that's... Uh, I, I, they, they've got Havos on the Storm Spirit, and that's fine. I'm just going to say it, man, and I'm sure there are going to be plenty who disagree. I feel like Havos, is, uh, Havos Ember Spirit is better than Dindy's, and Dindy's Storm Spirit might be the best on the planet. And putting those two players on those heroes in reverse like that, I just feel like you're really giving yourself a chance to be handicapped, because both of them are phenomenal with the heroes, and it's not like they're bad. Like, it's not like Dindy's a bad Ember at all. I just think he... Oh, wow. Dindy eats an auto-attack. There's the Hex. Can they follow it up? One more auto-attack will do it. He's down. Tried to sell between auto-attacks. Era able to use the magic stick and the bottle to survive just by a bit, but they're in a hole early on. Ken, just as I was saying it, this is just looking very problematic. This is like... Oh, this is why Lion was so popular right when they had to change to him in 6. Point, oh, I forget, 7, 9, 8, I forget what it was. But when he got the, the buff to his Hex, 2.5 seconds at level 1. It's a long freaking time. Mm -hmm. And they've gotten a number of kills already as the scoreboard is 4 to 1 in favor of Fnatic early on. Also, one thing to note, too, is we oh, we might see an engagement here up top. Puppy, he does have Malphite. It's only level 1, though. Um, but in that engagement, not only did Na'Vi have a way worse level 1, but Hani leveled up the Howl as well, which buffed everyone's damage by 20 for mm -hmm. the entire duration of that fight. And 20 damage might not seem like a lot, but when heroes have a, 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 a HP pool of you know 400 to 500 around there, it's actually quite a lot when you're having 5 to 5 engagements. Mm -hmm. Avos is currently leading in CS, so not all everything that went wrong. I love the point you made about Howl, by the way. And like, whenever you think of a Lycan early, you know he has solid right click, but it's so easy to just mentally forget that Howl makes everyone that much more lethal. And uh, you always talk about, um, talk about like the power of things like Chilling Touch, but it's so easy to forget just how good Howl is for the same reasons. Arrow's gonna go ahead and engage on Dendi again. He's got help coming from No Tail. He's gonna go ahead and toss a creep, but No Tail unable to get into range. And it looks like uh, we just got a, a notification from our stats guy. I'm gonna guess this was run earlier by Fnatic. Both you and I were setting up for this match, so we didn't get a chance to watch it, but yeah, uh, Fnatic has definitely found their rhythm. I think that's fair to say, no matter what they end up running. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, I, I mentioned this earlier. They're a team that's a roller coaster, man. Some days they look not so good, and some days they look like this, where they're just banging on all cylinders. No tail. He's got an invis rune. This could be trouble for Dendi, but he's full HP, so they need to play this correctly. They need to harass him down a little bit more. And Era, he's taking a lot of damage. If he gets the bottle charges up, they might get the skill. Kuroki, though, he's around on the backside. Might look to do something, but... Um, no till also one thing to mention is he's got one point into stats it looks like um, or he's just holding the point I can't nope he was holding the point yeah because he didn't have any extra uh, stat things there so two in hex two in stun just saw Kuro casually walk through mid lane just passing through then he engage upon there's the impale and the avalanche to follow it do they have the damage they do living armor not what it, they needed to be right now puppy's gonna try to get a return kill and not going to be able to do so. Maleficticks have a little bit attached to them, but not uh, able to get the follow-up damage they need. So everywhere on the map right now, this game is going 100% in favor of Fnatic. And Na'Vi, though, is keeping it relatively close on the back of pure efficiency. So um, it's not like it's out of hand by any stretch. Era, though, finds himself a haste room. They catch Puppy. This could be a big kill and will be. 
Jeez. And Era already on a dominating streak early on, six to one. But just being able to take Puppy off the map and slow his item progression down is a huge deal against an Enigma early, especially when you're already in a hole. Yeah, and uh, this is where you just have to really attribute this. Yeah, you can't even talk about lanes. Oh, Fly taking a lot of damage from him, both, but he'll be fine. But you can't really like look at this and say, oh, bad lanes or weird draft from Navi. It's just anything looks bad when you have you know a four for one exchange before a minute thirty. Oh, I missed that kill. Sorry. Me too. It looks like As we... Trixie. He, he was really low, but he gets <laughs> yeah. the kill on Phonix. So well played there. He's now got Stampede. He hasn't even used it yet. As he just thinks six, almost seven now, actually. Yeah, this is just disastrous early on. Avost is standing out as the lone hope they really have. He's a top CS board. Dindy, despite all the problems he's having, and is farming well. So, I mean, you can't take that away yeah. from him. He's sitting at 20 CS, and Tiny only at 11. So, pretty much all of Era's gold gain at this point is coming from pure kills, and that's a big reason why Navi continues to keep this reasonable. They're about 1,500 gold behind, which is a big deal at five minutes given there's no towers down, but it's not insurmountable by any stretch. They just have to be on point when they start to move Havost around. And speaking of, Havost is almost level six, about level five and a half now. Yeah, actually, I didn't have the last hit chart up, but they are actually really farming well, all mm -hmm. of Navi. Enigma in the jungle, I've mentioned this before, one of the fastest, I probably the fastest jungler in the entire game. Um, they're able to farm up, oh, here comes action. More and, action on mid. Jesus. And at bottom, Trixie eating a bit of damage. But yeah, that's... I don't know. Like, this is well played by Fnatic. Don't don't get me wrong. I just... I, I feel like... I, Navi's struggling, and we'll leave it at that. Puppy is doing what he can. He's almost level 6. He is level 5 now. And we may see him start to come out and try to give some help in mid or something. But they definitely need to change the status quo because this is just getting worse and worse for them as time goes by. That will change when a host hits 6 and becomes more of a threat. But for now, uh, all he can really do is just farm and hope the rest of his team can hold it together in some semblance. Yeah, it, I think it's really got to be the, the level sixes here. You have good level six abilities here for Navi. Um, obviously, Dendi's hit his, and he can be a little bit more mobile. When Havos hits his six, hopefully he's able to move around and help his team because they desperately need it. They're picking out Trixie. Mm. He's got no stampede, but he's pretty fast, and those tranquils will pop in about five seconds. So greedy. But yeah, he's going to be able to TP away. No stun. Chakram, a little late, but I actually had the camera on that the whole time as the rest of the map was relatively quiet. Uh, hold on, there's another kill on the puppy. Dear Lord. And this is what I was talking about last game, the peak and valley that is tiny. You can't give him kills like this because he peaks so high and so hard, and now we're going to have a searing chains on him, but look at the toss. Just toss, yeah. took Dindy down half health. But yeah, whenever you give a Tiny this kind of a start, whenever farm's not really the factor, it's just how well his toss avalanche combo works in conjunction with grow. Um... He gets so far ahead, and that valley time, whenever it starts to become about farming up items to get him back to relevancy in the mid-game, that becomes a very small window, and that window is shrinking by the minute now for Na'Vi. They have to get something on track. They're pinging out No-Tail. No-Tail actually doesn't know that he was spotted here, but he has the ultimate, yep. and he's cast it quickly. Look at that damage. Living armor saving a little bit, but not saving him enough. Bottom lane in the meantime, Funix in trouble. Actually coming out the double. Oh, go! What a play! Fly in the right place with the, uh, with the grave after the double edge. He double didn't edge. Need it. Yep. He didn't need it. He was good. Creeps might have got him. Creeps might have got him. Mate, but. it was close. <laughs> it was it was the life secured. Yep, exactly. And uh, yeah, double edge can't die to double edge damage. So you can take yourself down to one HP with double edge, but. Yep, just staying safe and making sure no creeps, no follow-up damage are going to bring him down. Fly, looking great. Looking quite fly in his Dazzle later set, by the way. And, oh, Havos, this is just your game, man. And they're going to try to make something happen with him. Dindy is level 6, has nothing, doesn't even have boots yet. Dindy's on would, bottle, yeah. bottle magic, uh, magic stick. And now, yep, they're going to prompt the ult out of Hani. Here comes mass reactions. Trixie doesn't have Stampede, but Era's right there to catch Funic. And this is another core taking a spill. It's 12 to 1. And I, I, I think the lesson to learn is... Haste on, haste on Arrow. He's going to catch out Dendi. Does he have a remnant? He's, again, he has no boots. But he remnants back. They find him, though. Oh, right on to oh, Trixie. No. That's a double kill for Trixie as he remnanted back. But like you said, Trixie, right place, right time. Better be lucky than good sometimes. And I, I didn't actually see. Was he waiting there and expecting that? or? Uh... I don't know. I, I, I'm going to go ahead and say he, they were because they were both sitting around there. And, right. And oh, we're Trixie. walking towards Dendi, yeah. 
being dove at top. And Havost wants to go into the woods. TP's coming. They're finally going to get another kill, though. Not before the double edge is there and giving Era another kill, especially a solo one. That's not a worthwhile trade at all. 14-2. to two. And again, this is what's astonishing. Despite how badly things are going in terms of losing heroes, there are no towers down and... They're keeping the gold close, man. They're only down about 3K at 10 minutes. That's really not that bad. Yeah, you would think 14 to 2 would be would be worse. It's just the Enigma effect. This hero farms so fast and gets so many creep kills early on at a very fast rate. But again, they're in a huge hole. And this is not a hero you want to snowball. Like Tiny, Tony, he is not a hero you want to have snowball. He's already got his drums and treads up. And honestly, also, look at this. No gold level freaking 8, man. Mm. And he's had this such a fast finger now. Yeah, he's already used it once. It's cooling down another 10 seconds. Uh, Navi, though, this is the power of, of the Enigma. You're able to push very, very quickly. And they actually get a tower. The first tower of the game actually goes to Navi, of all things considered. Yep. And that's that's what they need to be doing right now. It's... <laughs> Dandy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We noticed, brother. You've been waddling around fairly slowly for a while. Finally got his boots. And looks like they want to go on a Vos. The Vos is level 9, though, so it does have plenty of uh, escapability. And Aaron and Notel are going to be surrounded by unfriendly faces really quickly. Down at bottom, Fly and Trixie are going to push this tier 1. And in mid, we can see Hani just getting more and more farm. And he's going to have uh, his Vlads up very, very soon. And according to our stats, man, Nahaz is only the fourth time on record. Has had over 500 GPN at the 10 minute mark in a pro match. And uh, third time, 500 XP per minute. So I think that tells us it's an all right early game. Era's okay on this early game, Tiny. They're going to try to trade two towers for one as Hani hooks up with Era to bring down the tier one mid. Tier one bottom will end up dropping for sure. And it looks like they're just going to try to push through in a move of a little bit of desperation. Yeah, well, they definitely have means to push. Like, they have pretty decent pushing heroes. I think if they're able to get. Some Radiant some fast tower, team fighting team items, attack. namely like mech. Maybe top honestly top get top some top cloaks top. on your team or something. Let's just to mitigate some damage from Lion and Tiny. I think they're really gonna need it. it. Sounds wonky, but it might. They just need to live in team fights because they actually have good tools to fight with the team with the black hole and the treant with his ulti. He'll be level six in just a second. They get it here to uh, top, Radiant unmitigated. So they're showing off some signs of life here, Navi, and some very strong pushing. Trixie, cop of the Searing Chains. Here comes the rest of Fnatic, though. And we're going to have Puppy getting off the Malphus Black Hole on the no-tail. Behind that comes Lycan. Avos coming back into the fight, but immediately blown up in the big finger to Puppy as he biffs it again. Here comes Kuro looking for <laughs> safety in amongst his brethren. Hani right there with him. There's that big wind-up we were talking about, by the way. And godlike for Tiny as he gives Centaur the old heave-ho. <laughs> and secures another kill. And Eros just goes, oh, yeah, by the way, my supports are awesome and stack everything all the time. So I'm going to have a million gold in about two minutes. I told you, man. This is when, the first time I casted uh, Fnatic. It's, this is what they were known for when they switched over before and mm -hmm. when they were in Haunt. They were so good about stacking. That's what they were known for, constantly stacking everything. And they utilize it better than any team I've seen. So, um, Not to mention, they're just banging on all cylinders here and lion's gonna have a blink here soon 500 gold away from that for him yep and this is one of the best initiating supports in the entire game not to for mention sure. you're playing up against an ember spirit so yeah again though i mean oh someone's i gotta get rid of these notifications because i can't click the damn graphs and stuff <laughs> but i'm sure that not beads not ballpark out of out of here but Yep. Experience is actually very scary. They may catch this Roshan. Puppy does not have Black Hole. Hani's going to be spotted. Havos goes in, and they're going to be able to bring him down very quickly. There's the weave, though, and the big initiation out of No Tail, and they're just going to clean house behind it. Fnatic waiting on the high ground. Puppy biffs it again. Havos is going to come in off a of buyback. They lost Lycan and no one else. Funnick's actually up on the high ground, and they know it. Trixie looking for him. Here's No Tail. They know he's yep, there. Yep. Yeah. And... Uh, what you gonna do, Funic? <laughs> no, just, just, just hanging out. Just hanging out. It's fine. Havos is behind that, by the way. And there we go. The Hex after Trixie's blink comes off cooldown. Down he goes, and Havos is just gonna goddamn go for it. And there's the toss from the <laughs> low ground. Havos is doing work while he can. Good Grave gonna keep No-Tail alive. Dindy back up as well. And this is actually doing all right for Navi. They're buying some time for everyone to respawn. They lose again. Um, <laughs> Navos, <laughs> not happy about that. 3 to 23, and what has to be one of the most entertaining first 15 minutes of Dota I've ever had the chance to cast.
Oh, oh, Another toss. The poor man, the poor man told you. Dagger. Told you we were going to see it. Told you. Tossing the centaur, man. It's uh, it's nasty. And Dindy now has an invis. Has up tier two boots. He can steal the Aegis. He can steal the Aegis. It's possible. <laughs> Tr Trixie runs right by him here in mid. They're going to engage again on Phonic. And Phonic feels like he's a support at this point. Puppy's next on the list as he drops. The Eidolons aren't even scary here in the... In the pit, Dendy's hanging out. He's gonna try to snatch this bastard. Yeah. Here we go. And then they'll, and then they'll GG out right after that. He'll yep. snatch it and GG out. Here we go, go. Dendy. I'm, call, I'm calling it. I'm calling it. And yep, he got it. Snatched it, and Dendy tried. Oh, caught out. Oh, he actually makes it to the high ground. The preemptive toss, and Honey oh, able to track no. him down after Era gets under it a little bit and tosses him once again. Dendy's down 27 to three, and Havos. Trying to be cute again is spotted out. Trixie man moaning and has to be careful. Vos uh, does have a little bit of damage. Now he's going to jump back out. Look to get a kill. Goes for it. There's the vortex. Can they catch him? Yep, that's uh, one for one trade. 28 to four. <laughs> and Fnatic loses the Aegis, brings it off of Dendi again. And finally, that gold graph is beginning to reflect about how lopsided the action's been in the first 15 minutes, down to just about. 10k in favor of Fnatic right now. Gotta take some time to catch our breath, man. This is Navi and Fnatic, so those stats mean something now, too. Mm -hmm. As Era now has his log. It's log, it's log. It's log. It's better than that. Oh, it's gonna... What a reference. Well done. Yep. And they're pinging out. This is desperation smoke here for Navi. <laughs> but Fnatic, it looks like they got a smoke of their own. They might sniff this out. Here comes the backside, the little flank here from Navi. Oh, puppy. They're not going to find each other. Yep. Puppy had about enough time to go Oshit and Biff it. <laughs> here we go. They're going to go ahead and turn northwards now. No tail. Gonna spot them out. Up, oh, they might be able to get a kill. That's gonna be number five. Not before the impale goes off. Here comes Era. There's the toss after the stampede. Dindy trying to make it away. He's gonna rim them away and leave his buddies just hanging. Overgrowth buys him a little bit of time. Looks like yeah, Simtar actually got a kill with that Dagon to the south and the toss as Fly. Got away. Just flinging it, letting her fly every chance he gets. Thirty-one to five. And at this point, I'm glad Navi's hanging around. This is a fun match. This is honestly the most fun match of Dota I've casted since TI2 for sure. <laughs> John Elway here, uh, Tony Montana, <laughs> is tossing people around like it's nothing. So, yeah, it's it's funny because he has a – it's like a poor man's blink dagger here for, for Trixie if he needs it, if he doesn't want to waste the blink dagger cooldown. I saw that in mid. He actually had blink up and, and Tiny's like, no, nope, here, I'll just toss you. We got you, boss. Keep that on and CD. He, he's gotten like a number of blink, like multiple double-edged targets uh, off this game so far. So he's owning, but the rest of Fnatic really is. It's 31 to frickin' 5, man. Yeah, levels. A little, uh, little lopsided. Havost is uh, every single player on the side of Fnatic is the same level as the highest level on Na'Vi. That's not where you want to be. No tail. Gets the hex off. Funnick. Got to be helped out by Puppy. And her Dindy try to come back in. There's a leech seed onto him. There's going to be an overgrowth. Trixie's right there on top of Funnick. Needs to turn around. Weave goes off. Era and No Tail both caught. Oh, the black hole canceled by the avalanche. Little unfortunate luck from Puppy, who's still looking for one good effective black hole this game. And he will be able to duck back out. There's a vortex to bring Era back into the fight. TP's coming in and fly. Coming back to engage. Did not have the grave up, so couldn't save his buddy. Buyback on the tree, and they will be able to get a return kill as Funnick notches a double kill here in mid, though. Hani has other things to do. He's too busy being cool and too busy pushing towers. We'll see if they've got the TPs in reserve to come save this tower. Come back? Question mark? Could it, could it be? I mean, uh, who was it that got that streak? It was Puppy. Got like 1,400 gold right there, by the way, even though he was dead. <laughs> So he's got, yeah, 1,400 gold on top of his mech. Could be uh, in the makings of a BKB, which would be very, very nice for him if he wants it. So, yeah, I don't know. Could see a comeback. Highly unlikely, but they have the means to do so with these heroes. Black Hole is, is the is the end all here if they get all five members in it. So Yep. And they're hanging, man. Like, I mean, given it's 34 to 8, 42 kills in a 19-minute game, 
and it's still within reach. Like, I have seen games with a much larger margin of victory or margin of lead go the other direction before in the mid-game. Up, oh, this doesn't help. Dindy hexed out again. Wolves are already there. Has the impale. Didn't even need He could have solo killed Dindy. Just want to point that out. No-Tail did not need Hani to come in at all there. He could have solo killed the Ember Spirit for sure. Yeah, he does so much damage too. And also, on top of all this, I was going to mention, every single engagement, or almost every single engagement when Hani has the cooldown up, he's casting Howl. Like, every single initiation just to you know, for added damage onto whoever they're trying to initiate on. Um, Funnick, by the way, has a shadow hammer <laughs> yeah. as he's just perched up here right next to the tier two. <laughs> That's an interesting pickup. Yeah, he's just going to keep an eye on things, just <laughs> making sure everything's under control here. And, yeah, just going to keep staying. And here's Nature's guys. Looks like they might try to pursue Fnatic back into the jungle. He is going to reveal himself, so... But yeah, just making sure everything was going A-OK. -okay. They're going to move on up, and here's Lycan. He's got a whole team behind him, just about a whole team. And we're going to see Funnick try to engage onto him. There's Fly, gets a poison touch off, and they're going to turn around. There's the initiation of No-Tail again. Weave goes off, only got Funnick, though. And the Living Armor now beginning to show its power. There's Searing Chains on the two. Force Staff gets Fly back out. Here comes Era. And the big combo out of Funnick. No, still not enough to bring down Fly. Hani behind that, pop the Stampede. All of those Eidolons cleared off with one shot. Havos comes in to clear things up, but going to eat a lot of damage in the meantime. Overgrowth going to buy him some time. There's the toss, and Hani still right on his tail, using the last bit of mana to try and ball lightning to safety. Still able to pursue him out behind that curl, and Puppy can do nothing but try to slide their way to safety. And, yep, Fnatic back at it again. Three for one, and ready to maybe push a Tier 3. They could also rotate mid and take down this Tier 2 if they felt like it. Yep, yeah, it's hard to fish for things to say, but Fnatic has just pretty much got all their items and the means to push. Hani, his hero pushes insanely fast, not to mention so does Eras. And Eras now at 16. It's level 16 now with 21 minutes. That's insane. Era hit with the Malefus. And he is just shrugging off the tower damage like it's not even there. Havos back up 15 seconds. Good set of searing chains. Trixie and Era caught at the foot of the steps, but no engagement off of it. And Navi, rightly, not feeling like they're equipped to do anything without Havos. Worth mentioning, by the way, Havos got his Orchid up at a decent time. Um, despite all of the, everything that's gone against them, he actually did get it up uh, at a fair amount of time. Um, so he's going to be able to continue to be an influence on these fights. Just such a long, long road for them to have to walk if they want to get back to really in uh, contention and having the chance to set a pace in this game. Yep. Fnatic, they want to play it a little more safe. They have, still have these towers on the, on the left side of the map that they want to deal with, which is kind of crazy considering they have a Lycan that's, well, a Lycan, and then the Tiny that's overleveled as much as he is. Here comes <laughs> another smoke here, Navi. They want to keep pressing the issue. They, they want to find a way back into this game quickly. Level 8 for Dindy, by the way. They're going to catch Fly. Searing Chains are there. Havos there to follow it up, so they manage to find a support. The Dagon is up to level 3, by the way. Just want to point that out. Dagon 3 for uh, for Trixie. Yep. And now Necrobook 2 on uh, on their Lycan. But Dindy, he's looking for his oh, level 2 three. ultimate. He's got Necro 3 now, actually. He just oh, did he finish it? it. Just barely got enough gold. Um, I was going to mention one thing about Navi's <laughs> lineup. As Kuroki is constantly casting Overgrowth. <laughs> Look at that. Having some fun here. Yep. Oh, that, okay, that's what it was. I kept hearing that. Yeah, because it actually rumbles quite loudly. <laughs> Looks like he's humping the ground. <laughs> They're dancing. They're having a dance party here in the jungle. Having a dance party. Just get down, get down. Yeah. He's actually humping his friends because he's right next to trees. <laughs> just hanging. Just, just kicking it. <laughs> <laughs> Even Puppy getting in on the action of host. Doing a little, uh, doing a little hip step. Courier's now joined in. And it looks like they're finally this ready. When, this is when you know it's great when a team... Oh, he actually ulties, screams. I, I'm wondering if, if Puppy's going to ult too as well. <laughs> this is when it's great to watch because you know that despite them being down 38 to 10 kills, they're still having fun. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. Now, how do you not, man? This has been one of those games. <laughs> and Kuro under nature's guy is coming up front. He's going to get eyes on Trixie and everyone. There's the Kuro. He's immediately hexed out, though. Stop the follow it up. And uh, looks like he left the party a little too early. Should have stayed in the club, brother. Nothing good waiting on you at home. Yeah. Stayed in the trees, man, where yeah, you belong. Stay in the trees. Told you. Stay in the trees. Yep. Well, it still looks like Navi wants to fight, but they have wolves on them. So Fnatic knows exactly where they are <laughs> and what they're doing. 
Oh, wait, they're them. trapped! They're trapped! They're actually staying in the trees. Oh, okay, are they actually? No, they're trapped, I think. And here they are, caught out and blown up. And, yeah. This is... How? <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Unvouch, says Dendi. Not uh, tolerating cheaters. And D2L tournament play. Super serious match. 42 to 10, 52 kills in a 48-minute game. And they're going to go ahead and maybe look to close this one out. Phonics hanging out at the side shop. But, yeah, it's still not 20K, by the way. I think that's shocking, given how in control Fnatic is of this. And we can hear Kuro's having another dance party. Oh, is he? Yep, and he died. <laughs> <laughs> Had other stuff. Oh, Puppy going to land the best black hole of the game. And no one's there. <laughs> Down he goes. Uh, Fonic next on the list. Eric going to follow this up. And there's a grave on the no tail. Not that it's particularly needed. Blinks ahead, steals the mana, makes sure he has enough to finish it off. And hey, Dindy oh. coming back in with a Vost. Ready to clear, shop a bit. Era just going to go ahead and chop some wood while he's at it. It's three for three as of right now. And they're playing mostly for kills. Don't think we're playing Dota anymore. This is just team deathmatch, basically. Ani's all business in the mid lane. What a, what a party pooper, man. <laughs> Party pooper! As he's just hitting the buildings. And up oh, looks like Era actually managing to get Radiant's courier. <laughs> Tiny needs Dagon to stop the KSing. Bottle equals 300 gold. Did, did he steal his bottle again? Is that what they're joking about? I I don't know. No. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know either. Anyway. Yeah, I'd say this one should be uh, just about reaching its conclusion. Roche is up if they want to go take it, but in the meantime, yeah, looks like Navi actually denying the tier three as well. Yep, this uh, this is pretty much just whenever Fnatic wants to win. Here comes Hani, old team. He's gonna spot out Kuroki with the uh, <laughs> true vision there from the pink creep, whatever it's called. And no there's tail. the KS. <laughs> Kill secured by secured. no tail. Exactly. Not stolen, secured. You have no Dagen's idea. coming up galore on everybody as we got one for Shadow Priest as well as Tiny, Tony and the Centaur of course has his at level 5. Tiny with a haste rune because when it rains it pours apparently but they are going to go ahead and crest the tier 3's mid is already missing now they're going to go there's a stampede Trixie engaging on to Funnick double edge and the Dagon to make sure the kill is indeed secure no tail right on the tail Dindy hits him with the impale arrows right there will toss him didn't even need any help and Havos trying to get a kill pad the stats my friend Dindy on the buyback and Puppy gets off the Malefice there's the Midnight Pulse as well they're going to have some damage here and they're going to be able to bring him down toss went off before he did drop but there's the tacking from Trixie blowing Puppy up the Grave going to keep Trixie alive Havos continuing to bounce to and fro and they're going to be able to force them back out here as Havos makes it away with very little health Hani's still kind of a beast and going to work on Kuro doing what he can and we'll be locked down again. There's a nice vortex from Havos to bring him on back. Fly couldn't get in range for the grave. He actually had it on and off uh, cooldown. But Fnatic feeders, man. They're, they're trying to throw. <laughs> oh, a long range shadow wave gets the kill on the Kuroki. That was pretty funny. And look at, by the way, I've never seen this many urn charges on, on anyone. 17. 17 freaking urn charges on Fly here. He's getting caught out by Puppy, who's got the Blink Dagger. Malphus done. Black Hole up in 19, boys. Here we got this. Yep, there's the <laughs> the weave and no tail there to bail him out. Puppy going to be right click down. Avos was hexed as well. Fly right there with him. Avos has no mana, has nowhere to run, nowhere to go, and can do nothing but slowly. Yep, all oh, four staff. <laughs> Got him down to the low ground, but you know what? No Tail's got a, an item or two as well. Catches up with him, the immediate buyback. And yeah, I, I love it when pro games just go ham this way, when they just all stop caring and decide they're going to deathmatch it. It's the most fun in the world. He's got a four step on Storm Spirit. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's actually awesome. That's great. I thought I actually thought that was going to be a, a four staff from Dazzle to save to the boat. Oh, on God. Oh, Poor God. of host. And trying to jump away. No tail doesn't have his ulti. Uh, they're going to be able to bring him down, but not before Funnick. No, they actually. No, there we go. Era showing up with the Dagon. Searing chains from behind by Dindy. I don't know you want to run up that hill, guys. 
Fonix finding out why right now. He's brought down quick, fast, and in a hurry. Dindy going to try to rim it away. There's the stampede, and we'll be able to make it. No! Didn't quite make it to the low ground. Hani rejoining the fight. Oh, there's the toss. Puppy using the black whoa, hole, dragging whoa, him down whoa. the hill into nothing whatsoever. And he's going to have to blink away. Trixie right on his tail. Blink on off cooldown in seven seconds. He's the last man standing. And the Poison Touch, Daggins, and Laser Beams to help close this game out. And wait, Roshan. <laughs> and Roshan, please. Are they, are they, he's telling him to go Rosh. What's, what's he, he actually yeah. got? Let's see. What's he doing? He's waiting. He's trying to get a Daggins what he's trying to do. <laughs> yep. And Vonic hiding out. Well, sometimes, yeah, exactly. Sometimes pro games become pub games. And, and are they actually, there we go, Funic trying to get away. Tracked down, cleaned up. The Ancient under, yep. In case he's asking him to wait, like, legitimately. He wants his dag, and there it is. All right, they're going to spawn camp a bit. There's the overgrowth. Let's see if they can capitalize. Stampede gets him out of trouble. Puppy's down immediately. And Dindy doing what he can, which ain't a whole hell of a lot. There's a grave to make sure Fly stays alive. And, yep, did not get to use his Dagon. And uh, Havos comes out, though, and he's bouncing around. There's the toss of No Tail. And going to be Vortex disjointed, though, and brought down after the stomp bails his buddy up. So GG, well played indeed. 83 kills, 30 minutes, and a big game to win going the way of Fnatic as they close the series out and make that three gigantic wins in a row spanning the last 24 hours. I got nothing else to add, man. I'm done. I'm, I'm spent too, man. What more can you say? Six, no, wait, wait, sorry. 83 kills in half an hour. Yeah. I, what a game. That was pretty fun to watch. That's our last uh, game to stream here on the D2L, at least for a few days. Yep. So that was that was a lot of fun. I, I, I have no words either. I don't know what else more to say. <laughs> well played, nothing. Fnatic. You gave it a fighting chance, Navi, but in the end, Fnatic was the better team today. Yeah, yeah, better team. <laughs> I think <laughs> that's kind. I think maybe it's time <laughs> we start to ban Eris Tiny. I think. Can we all agree on that, guys? Can we all get on board that Eris Tiny's pretty good? And probably shouldn't let it into a game. And yeah, this is Fnatic breaking out of the shell. And you know what I love about this is we were literally having this exact conversation yesterday when they were getting ready to match up against the Lions. The fact that Fnatic just kind of does this. They slump for a little while, then suddenly they come out charging. And it's like they just put on their, their war faces, man. And then they'll just go on a streak like this, getting a win in TKO, getting the win against Alliance yesterday, and now knocking off Na'Vi um, to basically put them right back in solid middle middle of the playoff pack contention. This is a huge win for them in D2L play, and they've been looking great absolutely everywhere else. So I uh, don't know what else there is to say other than if you're a Fanatic fan, you're going to be pretty flipping happy about Eight hours or so so uh yeah 24 and 2 not bad for era he finished with 772 gpm ah the hell with it you guys can see the scoreboard it was a lot of fun and i'm sure the bot's gonna get some watches at least i would certainly hope so and i think that's gonna be it for us here today i'm your host aaron ac chambers who's still trying to fix his mic see this is i love my mic stand it's it's you know the old radio setup but sometimes it just doesn't want to stay close enough now we're good, but anyway, before we bail out again, Trav, how about you drop the deets, man? Where can they find you on your various social media networks and uh, everywhere that you're promising to stream? Yeah, <laughs> uh, my Twitter is twitter.com, or at Trav Dota, I should say, and my stream is www.twitch.tv slash Trav, so, yep. There you go. Make sure you check him out. Again, this is our last Western Challenge series, not just of today, but of the week. A lot of action coming up. Make sure you catch everything that's going on the Star Ladder. Much love and luck to all the teams uh, involved in that. Of course, BTS, we're giving you the coverage as well as Balot, and I uh, hope you guys will support them. I'm sure the numbers are going to be through the roof and justifiably. should be a phenomenal event. We'll be watching from home. Uh, as of right now, we're not planning to have uh, a reported segment for this week, and I know everyone was really happy with it last week. The reason we're probably going to forgo it this week is Charlie, who does manage basically all of North American Dota, is, as you can imagine, in Kiev. So uh, we don't know. Maybe we'll change our mind at the midnight hour. If we do have it, it'll be tomorrow. Chances are not going to be the case, though. But um, make sure you follow me on Twitter at AC at A-Y-E-S-E-E -E, and on Twitch TV, YouTube, Facebook, and elsewise. It's A-C-T-V, A-Y-E-S-E-E-T-V. 
And you can get updates about that. Of course, the D2L can be found on Twitter and Facebook as well. D2LGG, at D2LGG. So closing it out, once again, Fnatic goes 2-0 over Na'Vi in this last of this week ending, I guess, edition of the D2L Western Challenge. We'll be back next week to play through the remainder of our schedule, guys. Thanks so much for being a part of the broadcast. Can't wait to see you. See you then. But until then, enjoy your morning, evening, or afternoon, and enjoy some Dota.